In this video, the insanity of 2020, a sneak peek at all the new stuff from Adjuster TV in 2021, and the personal assistant that already works for you for free. Starting now. You're watching the Property IA Show. This video is sponsored by Kaplik. Are you an insurance adjuster? Then you need insurance adjuster. Learn about all the coverages you need from e and to general liability and even commercial auto in the free guide at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. And by Adjuster Pro. Most IA firms won't even look at your resume until you've got some state adjuster licenses. Get your licenses and maintain them with CE at adjustertv.com slash adjusterpro. Hey, it's Matt here with Adjuster TV and for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. Four out of five scientists agree, 2021 will be better if you like this video. Okay, 2020 was an absolutely insane year. The normally sleepy passing of years and decades sometimes gets interrupted by total chaos, which was 2020. Our industry, the insurance claims industry, was no exception. We had 30 named hurricanes, 12 of which made landfall in the lower 48. We had at least one category five storm. We had a new storm forming for the most part at least once a week all season long. Look, I've been an adjuster for a long time and I've seen the quiet years and I've seen the crazy years. And I've seen time and time again, forecasters be wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong again about the forecast for the hurricane season. I've seen adjusters get deployed to the coast only to be told to go home a week later. I've seen huge storms where they're scrambling to deploy enough people and then two weeks later another huge storm hits a thousand miles away and there's literally nobody available to take claims. So I've seen a lot, but 2020 has been just nuts. And that's just, this is just for the Atlantic hurricane season. We also had the Iowa derecho, which cost an estimated $7.5 billion, which is more than a lot of hurricanes. We had the wildfires in California and across the West, never mind the pandemic and the civil unrest. And I'm not even gonna touch the election. This year has been nuts. Claims is a little bit like flying an airplane, or so I've been told. Hours of relentless boredom punctuated by moments of sheer terror. Here at Adjuster TV, we did our best to stay on top of all the insanity with news updates and live streams from the coast. We produced videos to help you figure out if you even want to get into this work, how to get started if you do, and how to crush it as a claims professional in an extremely volatile industry. We even released free Xactimate X1 training, which is still available right now at adjustertv.com slash Xactimate, so that you can see the changes in Xactimate from 28 to X1 and the workarounds, shortcuts, and tricks that an experienced adjuster like me uses to cut down time spent building estimates and claims files so that he or she can close more high quality claims in a day so that this job can actually be worth it. We got to share with you the vital tools and services from our marketing partners and sponsors like Kaplik, CCMS and Associates, Adjuster Pro, My Adjustimate, Adjuster Portal, IAPath, Adjuster Supply, Bully Bag, so many more. Tools and services dedicated to helping you be more effective as a claims professional. And we've got so much more to offer you in 2021. Learning about a claims career is great, but what if you're already licensed? What if you're already an ASIC at Xactimate? What does Adjuster TV have for you? Well, we've got new shows that go deeper into our industry. We've got war stories from the road, long form podcasts, news and weather for just us claims pros, so much stuff that you can watch and listen to to get informed and entertained. Adjuster TV is going into its fourth year as the premier media platform for the independent claims adjusting industry. And because of our unique role in this regard, we're able to find out from our industry partners and from you the kinds of information and training that we all need the most. So take this as an unofficial announcement that there's going to be some new training coming along later in 2021 that will give you such a huge advantage as an adjuster that it's probably not fair. This training will be presented with adjuster TV style. So you know it's going to be fast paced, but you can pause and rewind, entertaining and heavily focused on the skills and knowledge that you need with none of the fluff or extra stuff that you're just never going to see as a field property adjuster. I'm very excited about this and it's been a long time coming. It's probably the most needed thing in our industry, but it's still a secret. So that's a little recap of 2020 and kind of a sneak peek at 2021. Okay, one of the biggest time sucks that we have as field adjusters is our desk. 
What do I mean by desk? And this is a term I picked up when I worked as a senior field adjuster at a major carrier. Essentially, your desk includes all of your phone work, your email work, meetings, and like admin work and stuff that you have to do as an adjuster for each claim. As independents, especially as first responders on CAT, in most cases, we don't have all of the admin work that a dedicated carrier staff adjuster has, or even a field daily adjuster as an IA. We may touch the file once up front to get the loss scoped and an estimate written up, and then most of the time, that's about as far as our responsibility goes. However, we do still have admin work and we definitely have phone work, and it's definitely still a huge time suck. And if we fall down on those things, on those desk responsibilities, even though there's not very many of them, it's gonna be a disaster guarantee. So because of this, I'm a big proponent of outsourcing your desk to either a person in the form of an assistant, whether that's a spouse or friend or somebody that you hire or some kind of software or service. And these days, there aren't a lot of those kinds of services. So you're likely going to have to do this yourself or have your wife or husband or assistant or whoever do it. I want to share with you a little trick that was taught to me back when I very first started doing this back in 1999. And that is this have office hours. Through my career as an adjuster, I have expanded on this to create a whole scheduling workflow that is built around creating space in my schedule to get this kind of admin slash phone work done so that by the end of the day, I'm eating dinner and going to bed and not staying up until midnight poking around in claims. I have to stress that if you wanna be a CAT adjuster and actually make a living at it, you're going to be on the road for a long time at a stretch. You will burn out if you try to run on four or five hours of sleep every night for weeks on end, I promise you. This is one of the main reasons that so many new adjusters don't last. There are several other reasons as well, but those are for another video. So who is this free assistant that already works for me? It's my voicemail. I know, right? There is a way to use your voicemail to take a huge load of work off of your shoulders. Also, you can use your voicemail to protect your claims file quality as well as preserve your schedule. So how does this work? How does your voicemail accomplish all of that? How does it reduce your workload, keep your file quality high, and keep you from losing control of your day? Simple. You're outsourcing work to an assistant, okay? This assistant takes a message for you that you can then later address. Either call back or don't call back. I teach what I call single tasking to anybody who will listen pretty much. This is the opposite of multitasking. I have a couple of videos about the perils of multitasking, but I'll give you the broad strokes here. When you multitask, you are attempting to do two or more things at, at the, the exact, exact same, same time. Times. Because you can't really technically do that, you're really doing something called by researchers task switching. So every time you switch between tasks, you kind of have to restart your brain into that new task. And here's an example. If you're trying to add a series of numbers in a calculator, while at the same time your spouse is giving you a seven item grocery shopping list, it's just about impossible to be any good at either of those things while you're trying to do them at the same time. Your calculations have a high chance of being incorrect and you're very likely going to forget the sour cream, which is the most important ingredient in the dish that your spouse is making for the Christmas party. So it's lose-lose. I hope that I'm crystal clear in this. Do not listen to anybody who says that in order to be a great adjuster, you have to be great at multitasking. It is not true. So how do you become a great adjuster? You have to be good at prioritizing tasks and organizing your time every hour of every day so that everything gets done and your manager's phone doesn't ring. Here's how it works. If you're writing an estimate, then you are writing an estimate, okay? You're not scoping, you're not watching the game, you're definitely not answering your phone, okay? Why? Because the second you pick up the phone, you have to stop what you're doing in your estimate. Then you have to restart your brain into what this person on the phone wants to talk to you about. So they wanna talk about the figures on the roof and siding on a completely different estimate. What are you gonna say? Are you gonna say, oh no, sorry, I'm working on a different estimate right now. Let me just call you back in a little bit. No, you would have let your voicemail answer it if you were gonna do that, right? You're gonna jump into that other estimate and get this person taken care of. Let's be generous and say that this only takes a half hour. You get off the phone with this person and now you have to figure out where you were in the estimate that you were working on before this person called. I wish you the best of luck. In order to not make any errors, you're gonna to have to backtrack in your estimate writing process to be sure that you didn't miss anything. How long does that take? Well, it could take a few seconds, but according to researchers, that can take up to 15 minutes, okay? So an estimate that should have taken you 20 minutes 
start to finish is now taking you 20 minutes plus a possible extra 45 minutes to do, right? Now, if you let that call go to voicemail and you have time set aside only for calling back all your voicemails, then you can write this estimate and two more in the time that it will take if you're answering the phone every time it rings. If you're scoping a loss, this is even worse. You're up on a roof and your phone rings. It's an insured who's calling back to confirm their appointment. You're gonna have to climb down off that roof, go to your truck, pull up that file and look and see when you had them scheduled. Then you might as well add a diary note while you're sitting there. I'll be kind and say that maybe this only takes 15 minutes. Climb back up on the roof and try to figure out where you were and restart. Okay, so once or twice a day, probably not a big deal to do this, right? But if you make a habit of answering the phone every time it rings, you're never gonna get any work done, and that is a fact. So when you're not in a phone or admin time block, which is what I call my scheduling blocks, you're gonna let all those calls go to voicemail. Once you get to your voicemail time block, you're gonna sit down in front of your computer with your CMS or your estimating software open in front of you. You're gonna grab a sheet of paper and you're gonna write down all your messages. You'll find that you don't even have to call all of them back. Hey, this is Jerry. I got your message about coming by Friday at 9 a.m. And hey, that's totally fine with us. We'll just see you then. No need to call back. I'm telling you right now, if you had answered Jerry's call, you'd be talking about the weather for 20 minutes. Experience adjusters, can I get an amen on that? Because you let your free, friendly assistant your voicemail, take Jerry's call, you saved yourself 20 minutes. And you don't even have to call that guy back. So you wrote down all of your voicemails. Then you start calling them back. You can make notes in Xactimate or ECS or Navigator or NextGen or VCA or whatever it is as you go. So you've killed two birds with one stone. That is, you took care of that person and then you updated the file, which you should always do. And because you set aside time to do this during the day, it didn't interfere with your inspection schedule. I usually do this mid-afternoon, especially if it's super hot out. I just build it right into my schedule, just like another scoping inspection. If I get any more voicemails after I do my admin time block, I just stop into a coffee shop on my way back to the hotel, crack open my computer, and I'm calling those people back. And while I'm sitting there, I'll also wrap up any loose ends before I go back to my hotel or RV. So when I get back there, I'm done for the day. Again, if you make a career out of field claims like this, especially if you travel, you're going to want to manage your time in such a way that you have enough hours to decompress and get a full night's sleep every single day. It's not gonna always happen, but it is doable, and I would say absolutely necessary in order to avoid burnout. I've heard it said that the average time a person spends traveling for cat as a cat adjuster in that cat adjuster role is about two years. I made it 20. Be smart about how you manage your time and you'll be a successful property adjuster. Also, be smart and become a member of NACA which is the National Association of Catastrophe Adjusters. I'm a member myself, and I'm gonna be at the annual convention in Orlando in January of 2021. I hope to see you there. Okay, that's it for me. If you enjoyed this video, you'll love writing along with us on Adjuster TV Plus. Learn the ins and outs of property and auto claims from industry veterans. We know it's hard to find a working adjuster who will let you shadow them, which is why we let you write along with us on Adjuster TV Plus. Check it out for seven days absolutely free at Adjuster TV Plus. Com. For much more information about becoming a successful property or auto claims IA, including many more videos, free tutorials and webinars, the best gear and software for claims, and industry news and IA weather reports, head on over to adjustertv.com. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.